to Cosplay Kate Fletcher. We are in now week five of my Corona Craft Challenge and I wanted to start the video by thanking everybody who has joined in so far for joining in. I can't tell you how much it means to me that people are actually taking the time to join join in with my challenge so thank you so much to everybody who's taken the time to do so. I think the the most popular week so far was the week I did the stencil challenge with the rainbows. Um, I had so many entries that week. It was absolutely incredible. Um, but last week I had one lady who loved the joy fold card so much. She made like four or five and that was brilliant because, do you know, that's my absolute favourite fold to make. And to have someone enjoy it as much as I did. That made me really happy. Um, I also had a really beautiful entry emailed to me by a lady called Dawn. I don't know how to put um, photos in the description box of the video, so I can't show you. Um, but it was really, really beautiful. So keep letting me know what you're making, guys. Keep showing me, email me, tag me on Instagram, whatever you need to do. But I really love seeing what you're making. So this week's challenge, it's a really quick one to do, but it is so much fun. So you're going to need two pieces of cardstock that are just cut down. Um, I'm not going to give you measurements because it is entirely up to you what size you use, and you'll see why in a second. Um, so we're going to start off with, this is just jute from the garden centre, but you could use baker's twine or string, whatever you want really. And you just cut a length like so. Then you're going to need some paint. I am using my metallic paints from Wilco because they're really, really pretty. But if you haven't got these, it doesn't matter. You can use any paint you like. I don't think it works so good on um, ink pads because you need to literally get this string or whatever you're using covered in ink. Um, but if you don't have like paints for crafts, I'm sure if you had like in your garage or in your loft a tin of paint that you'd used for painting the house or whatever, I'm sure that would work just as well for what we're going to be doing. So what you want to do is absolutely cover the um, string or twine or whatever you're using cover it in the ink be really liberal we want it really really inky oh that might be a bit too much but never mind now you don't want to go all the way to the end of the string because you're going to want to keep a bit that you can pull in a second so i'm just going to keep like some in my hand um as my pulling bit but as you can see being very liberal with the paint, really saturating the um, string in the paint. I don't actually know what this technique's called, you know. I think I'm going to call it like inky string pulling or something. I really don't know what it's called. Right, I'm just going to put that away for one second. And I'm going to grab a baby wipe and just clean myself up a little bit because... In a second, I'm going to be bringing in a really heavy book and I don't want to get it covered in paint. So I'm also going to be cleaning up my uh, mat here. So I know that crafting is supposed to be messy in that, but I don't really want to ruin my book. Okay. And then I'm just going to dry it off a bit with this microfiber cloth right so you're going to need two pieces of A4 paper folded in half and slotted one inside the other and then you want to kind of stagger them as you can see I've done here so that you can put them inside a book and it overhangs because you don't want to be, unless it's a book you're not that bothered about, you don't want to be getting ink on the pages. So this now overhangs at the top and it also overhangs at the bottom. And then bring in the two pieces of cardstock, one to the side for a second. 
But what you're going to do is place one piece of cardstock on the paper, grab your piece of paint covered twine, and then you sort of just make an S shape with it. So you lay it down on the card and make like an S. Okay, like that. And then we're going to bring in the other piece of cardstock and put it over the top. So this one technique gives you two toppers basically. I'm just going to pop that on the top there. And then close the book, making sure that I can still get hold of the end of my string. Okay. Let's just try and show you. My string's there. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand on the top of the book, push down and pull the string out of the book. Excuse me for the shake. Right, normally <laughs> you'd open the book, take the cardstock out, but as you can see, mine came flying out the bottom. But when you open it up, this is what you have. How beautiful is that? It reminds me of a calla lily. And I think it's really stunning. So now once that's dry, you've got a really beautiful topper. And all you need is a sentiment on there. Mount it on a note card or something and you are done. Um, I'm sure if you waited for it to dry or used a heat tool to dry it, you could do other colours over the top or um, maybe make a bouquet. Really is up to you. But that is what this week's challenge is to do. So you can do one like I've done or you can wait for it to dry and go over the top. See what happens. But please do remember to show me what you've made. Tag me, email me, um, comment on the video and tell me where to look. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of fun, really, really quick, but how beautiful is this technique? And if anybody knows the proper name for it, do feel free to let me know in comments, but I think I'm just going to call it ink, I don't know, string ink dragging, maybe? Anyway, that's it for this week. Over to you guys, show me what you can do, enjoy it, have fun with it. And I'll be back soon with more videos. So stay safe, take care, and I'll be back soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.